Hey, welcome to the Electronics Lab. This is David Williams, and this video is about modeling diodes. And when I say modeling diodes, I mean, how do we mathematically model the way that the diode behaves in a circuit or the way that the diode causes voltage and current to behave in that circuit? But before we look at that, let's just take a look at the circuit symbols that we're going to use for diodes. A good representation of this diode is as a PN junction, where we've got the P-type material up here at the top, where the intrinsic semiconductor was doped with something with one fewer electron than silicon has. And then down here, we have the N-type material, where the intrinsic semiconductor was doped with some kind of impurity that has one more electron than, than, than silicon does. Now, this is kind of a cartoonish representation of the diode. But now if I were to draw it as what a diode might actually physically look like, we've got a block in the middle with two leads coming out, and quite often there's a band drawn at one end and indicate the end side of the PN junction. And finally, we could draw the diode as the circuit symbol, where it's got a triangle or kind of an arrow pointing in one direction with a little bar at the end of the arrow, and that arrow indicates the direction that current can flow in the diode conventional current. So on the top, the P side of the diode is the anode, and the bottom or the N side of the diode is called the cathode. And like I mentioned, the shape of the circuit symbol kind of represents the behavior of the diode. Current can only flow in this one direction, in the direction of the arrow within that, that the diode circuit symbol is drawn as, as well as this arrow that I've drawn beside the, the circuit. So current can only flow in that one direction, it's blocked from flowing in the other direction. So if I have a simple circuit with a power supply and a resistor and a diode, that diode would be forward biased and current would be able to flow in that diode. So describing the relationship between voltage and current in a diode, uh, diodes are nonlinear devices. And what I mean by that is the relationship between voltage and current in the diode is not linear. Would be before we go into what that nonlinear relationship is, let's just first take a look at what a general re linear relationship is. And a circuit that you know that has a, a linear relationship between voltage and current is a simple circuit with a voltage source and a resistor. And I also have an ammeter, something that I can use to measure the volt, uh, measure the current and something to measure the voltage. So we can measure the voltage across the resistor and the current through the resistor at the same time. I can measure that relationship between voltage and current for this resistor. And if I adjust this voltage source here, for starting from zero up to some positive value and at various different steps, I can measure the voltage and I can measure the current. And I can do the same thing for the negative direction. I can take that voltage from zero down and, and drop it down for negative values. If I was to plot that relationship between voltage and current, I'll have the current on the vertical axis and the voltage on the horizontal axis, and plot out the various measurements that I took. I would come up with something like this, the straight line relationship. I don't, I don't really care in this case what the actual voltages and currents are, but I would end up with something that was a straight line relationship. As voltage increases, the current's going to increase by the same proportion. And mathematically, I can express this as voltage is equal to resistance times current. We know this is Ohm's law, where R is the multiplier times the current to give me the voltage. I guess it would actually be more appropriate for, for considering this linear relationship, where we can just consider that the current is the dependent variable and the voltage is the independent variable, that current is equal to 1 over R times V. But either way, I get this nice re linear relationship between voltage and current. The relationship between voltage and current in a diode is not linear, but it's also not very complicated. But we are going to look at a few different models that allow us to model that relationship between voltage and current. And the different models are going to progress from the very easy to more and more difficult. For model one, I am going to model that diode as a short as long as the voltage source is greater than zero 
so current can flow in the direction that it's supposed to go through the diode. So the diode is acting as a short and current's going to flow in this circuit. And then based on whatever the resistance value is, we're gonna have some voltage drop across it, but there is no voltage drop across the diode. So the current is just going to be based on whatever the resistance is. If the voltage source is less than zero, so you can see, even though I'm drawing the voltage source in the same orientation, let's say that we can actually dial it down. So we've got this voltage source less than zero. The diode will not be forward biased. And so there will be no current that can go through it. So in the case with a voltage source less than zero, we can consider the diode to be an open circuit. Now, this is a very simple model. The next model that I'm going to show you is a little bit more complicated, but it actually does a much better job of representing the diode because the diode itself takes into account the barrier voltage that's introduced by the electrons in the n-type material falling into the holes of the p-type material. And so there is that barrier voltage that must be overcome in the p-n junction before current can start to flow. So if you'll remember, if this is my p-n junction, I've got these holes on one side, these extra holes on one side, and these extra electrons on the other side. I denote those as p-n. And if I have no voltage applied, electrons from one side are going to fall into the holes on the other side. Not all of them are going to have that, are going to do that, but some, some that are close to the boundary are going to go, some of the electrons that are close to the boundary between P and N are going to fall into the whole side. And what that's going to create is a region where there are no extra holes in the electrons, but because electrons move to one side and it's going to make one side slightly more positive and one slight side slightly more negative. And because of that, we're going to have the barrier across this, what we call the depletion region, a voltage barrier that needs to be overcome before current can start to flow. So we need to make the P side somewhat more positive and the N side somewhat more negative in order to push these electrons towards the holes and these holes towards the, are going to accept the electrons and current's going to flow as we close that barrier. And that barrier voltage is also called the forward voltage. So, so as soon as we can overcome that forward voltage, current's going to flow. But if the source voltage or the voltage across the diode is less than the barrier voltage, and we can represent it in a circuit here with a source voltage, a resistor, and the forward voltage. And if I have my voltage source in the other orientation, the diode will just be modeled as an open. Now model number three. It's going to take into account that forward voltage. So let's say we've got enough forward voltage to overcome the barrier. So we'll have conventional current flowing in that direction, but the PN junction itself has a small resistance associated with it. So it's not exactly a short circuit when the, when the diode's forward bias. There's a little bit of resistance. There's some resistance to it that we can add to our model. So again, let's go to our circuit. We've got a voltage source and a current limiting resistor like we've had in all the other models. And now the model for this, for the diode is going to include the forward voltage as well as the small resistance of the PN junction when the diode is forward biased. So as long as that source voltage overcomes the forward voltage, current will flow. But that current is going to be limited not only by the external current limiting resistor, but also by the RD or the, the internal resistance of the diode. Now, if I flip the voltage source around, the diode will be reverse biased. So again, like in all the other models, no current's going to flow in it. This last model. Now, this is going to be the most precise model that we have of a diode in the circuit. And the fact that it is set up here to show you how we'd come up with this particular model and, and the way that we come up with this particular model is using the voltmeter across the diode and the ammeter to measure the current that's going through the diode. And we're going to vary the source voltage starting from zero and increasing it and measuring that voltage across the diode and the current through it. So I, I increase it in small steps. And as I increase it, uh, take at, at each step, I would measure the voltage across the diode, measure the current through the diode. And then I do the same thing in the negative direction and see what my voltage and current is through the diode as I decrease uh, the voltage and decrease it from zero down to some arbitrary low value. 
And what we'd end up with is a graph that looks something like this. We've actually got three different regions for this diode. There's the forward bias region. I've got a reverse bias region. And then there's also a breakdown region. OK, the details of running this experiment. So what I would do is start my voltage source at zero and then start slowly increasing it, increasing it in steps. And at, at the very beginning, when the voltage source is close to zero volts, I will have no current flowing. And then as I get closer to what's denoted VD, which you could think of as the forward voltage or the knee voltage, is as I get closer to that, the current st slowly starts to increase. And then that rate of increase increases. And then the current really starts to take off. So even small changes in voltage will cause a significant change in current. So that's the forward bias region. The reverse bias region, that will happen as I dial the voltage source from zero down to, uh, to net towards negative values. And as you can see, there is very little current that's flowing. It's not zero, but it's, it's, essentially, it's essentially zero. And the, the only thing that's carrying current at that point are the minority carriers in the P and the N junctions. Then once I have reached a certain voltage, call that the breakdown voltage, now I have enough voltage, the electric field inside the diode is strong enough that it's basically going to start ripping charge carriers out of the, out of the silicon and turn this into a, essentially a, a short circuit. So now let's go back to the forward bias direction. We can see that it's a, the way that the current takes off is really exponential. So we, we can say is the current is proportional to e to the power of vd. And with some careful analysis, we could determine that this relationship is, is like this. It's ID is equal to this constant IS times E to the power of the voltage divided by another constant, N. That's just a value dependent on temperature. No, N is not dependent on temperature. That VT is dependent on temperature. N is just dependent on the, the type of diode you have. Minus, minus one. IS is called the saturation current and is based on the diffusion of the minority carriers into the depletion region. E, of course, is Euler's number and N is a number between one and two that depends on the diode. And VT is a voltage, which is the thermal voltage. That's, it's, a, it's, de it's dependent on temperature and is equal to Boltzmann's constant times the temperature in Kelvin divided by the charge on an electron. Now, how this is derived is not so important for this video. I just wanted you to recognize that this equation shows the exponential relationship between ID and VDS. I just want to reiterate what we have in this video. We've looked at four different models of the relationship between voltage and current in a diode in a circuit starting from the very simple going up to the more complicated. Well, the second model that we looked at with is just showing that we can model the diode as having a constant voltage across it if it's forward biased and no current through it is if it's reverse biased. And that's the model that we're going to be using most of the time because it's quite simple to use. And at the same time, it's a pretty precise model for describing exactly what's going on with the diode. So I hope you learned a little in this video and I will see you in the next one.